All right, everybody, welcome back. We're going to be talking about the market update. And we've got David Childers from KCM. That's Keeping Current Matters, just in case you don't know what KCM stands for. And if you have a chance, go to keepingcurrentmatters.com. Pick it up for, dude, what is the price of Keeping Current Matters? Like 30 bucks or less? $20, $29 a month, yeah, so... Uh, it's, it's not, not, not a lot to stay on top of the market. And, you know, when people send us messages, they say the number one thing that they, uh, appreciate about keeping current matters is the time it saves them to yes. go out find out all the information. So, so uh, you know, on that, yeah, I was on, um, uh, I got to, so I, I got a message that the, the previous owner of the Dallas Mavericks has his own show. And he was like, Hey, Tristan, I'd love to interview you on the real estate market. I, I saw that. I remember when you posted that, I watched it. Yeah. And so because of our talks, right. And because of the graphics that you provide, right. When right. those questions came up, I was like, Oh, I just talked to David about this. Hold on. I got this. <laughs> and I was like, Dude, I look like a pro because of the information you guys had. So that's that, uh, and that's our goal, right? Is to be informed. And you and I were talking earlier in the world we live in today to be informed and let that counter the emotion that's in the world uh, is, is I believe how we how we have to operate. You know, uh, agreed, man, agreed. There's just too much, too much emotion going out there. Not enough logic and not enough kindness. That's for either. sure. That's for sure. Yeah. All right, buddy. So with that, let's go. Show me what you got. Let's talk. Yeah, yeah. So I pulled a few slides. You know, it's it's been a few weeks since we have a chance to do this. And I always love coming back and, and getting a chance to spend just a few minutes talking about what's happening in the market. You know, boy, I even mean, in the last couple of weeks, there's been a little bit of a little bit of news activity. A couple of things have happened, you know, and so um, maybe today, here's where I would start, Tristan, is we'll bring in and let's talk about some of the facts and what's going on in the market and maybe uh, just remind everybody of a few things that, that, that they know, because where we stand right now, you know, the middle of November, it's Friday the 13th today, so many things, you know, out there about that and, uh, you know, being to Thanksgiving soon, end of the year and uh, holidays and um, you know, certainly a, a lot of concern about COVID uh, again, you know, rising cases and, you know, concerns about the economy. So let's talk about all that. I found a, a very interesting quote from the University of Oregon that I want to start with today. And, and it says this, there's nothing fundamentally broken in the economy that needs to heal. And I think that's important to remember right now, Tristan, this is not you know, a, a you know a housing crisis or a mortgage crisis or a banking crisis like we experienced back in 2008, where there were issues with the system. This has been a you know a health crisis that's caused uh, a lot of economic hardship. You know, businesses maybe not surviving, businesses having to close down, uh, people that are employed uh, getting laid off and and not you know being able to earn. Uh, income, and he goes on to say, there is no obvious financial bubble driving ex excessive activity in one economic sector when the pandemic hit. Uh, with COVID-19 cases surging again, it is understandably hard to look optimistically to the other side of this winter, but don't let the near-term challenges distract from the economic stage being set for the next four years. And that's not some obscure presidential, uh, you, you know, <laughs> Um, uh, illusion or, or, or alluding to that. It's saying, hey, the economy, as we get through this pandemic, the stage is set for the economy to continue to grow. And so I think that's a, I would just start off with that today as a reminder um, that, you know, as we look out economically speaking, certainly real estate has been insulated. Uh, during the pandemic, we've seen, you know, our business grow. A lot of other businesses, service sector businesses, entertainment businesses, travel, all those things have been hit and hit hard. We know that, uh, you, you know, the the disproportionate effect on the lower income scale, a lot of those individuals being hit hard, you know, I'm not saying that to say there aren't issues in the economy, but just to remind everybody that, you know, as as we get through this health crisis and see more good information, you know, we heard information the past week about um, 
you know, a, uh, a vaccine coming out and, you know, the, 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 the way they treat people getting better and better. I don't have a crystal ball and I'm not here to tell you what, what that's going to be in the next week or two. But I think as we go into next year, we can expect to hear more of that information, more, uh, you know, progress on the pandemic and the economy to improve. But, but you know, we've, we've got the winter to go through right now and certainly rising cases and some, some uncertainty, if you will. Yeah, all right. So with those rising cases, tell me, we we have a lot of, of emotions going into where we're at right now as a country because sure. um, we're the division that we that we've always had. Right. We've always been divided, but we can work together. Uh, the, the division that we've always had just seems to be more pronounced because of social media and because of media sure. in general. Sure. Right. So with that, logic goes out the door and we welcome emotions more, right? And we're like, well, if so-and-so is going to be president or not president, we're either screwed or we're not screwed, right? Sure. And sure. so let's forget all of that and let's look at where we are as an economy, right? And let's look at where we're at in the housing world. What does that look like in the next few months? You know, I think the um, where I would start out is let's look at the economy and then let's start to look at housing because, you know, there's this question of, you know, what's coming in 2021. That's that's barreling down, you, you know, towards us. Uh, you know, you posted something yesterday, I think, uh, in in the group saying, you know, what, what do you say to a client that says there's maybe a, a, a housing crash coming? I, you know what I did uh, on that? I took a picture, a screenshot on my phone of that within two hours, pull it up here. There were 318 comments. Yeah. Two hours. And I know in a, in a, in a group the size of LAFCO, that's not yeah. that big of a deal. And I'm yeah, like, but that's, that's a lot of comments. And, yeah. you know, in a couple of hours, uh, I think I saw it in the first 12 minutes and they're like 75, you know, I mean, yeah. some of the people were like, you know, I, I have an opinion about that. So <laughs> I would say that, uh, you know, I would say there's, you know, right now, no good news, no bad news. Let's just give people the news. And, and it's it's kind of a, a little bit of a, a mix. So let me let me start here with a little bit of economic data, and then we'll, we'll transition into housing uh, market data. So first is, you know, since we last talked, the Bureau of Labor Statistics released the October unemployment report. We're down below 7% in unemployment, 6.9% uh, across the country. I'm not suggesting that's a great unemployment number. It's not. But to put it in perspective, we're about 3.5% before the pandemic started. So it's certainly not almost 15% like the height of this. And we've seen that come down. Still mm -hmm. needs to come down. Um, but, uh, but unemployment is slowly uh, coming down. Now, the question is, you know, will it continue to come down? And what does that look like? And we're going to stay on top of that. But uh, so far, you know, we, we went up in April and have come down uh, every month since then. You know, if we look at, at our business, um, bank rate reported this rising yield on government bonds reflects new optimism about the U.S. economy. But the trend could bring unwelcome news for mortgage uh, borrowers. High rates on 10-year Treasury notes generally means rising rates for 30-year mortgages. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not here to tell you. Uh, you know, rates are going to shoot up overnight, but as the economy improves and as we get, uh, you know, more good economic data and, and things start to get better, we can expect, you know, mortgage rates to rise, which is going to, I think, even psychologically affect people that are in the housing market right now, you know, coming out of this environment of, you know, a 3% or, or lower on a 30 year fixed right now, it makes, you know, 4% or 4.5% or 5 look like a high rate, you know, and so I think we're going to have to deal with that in the coming months. And, you know, another good piece of, uh, of information about our business is the number of mortgages that are in forbearance are decreasing and have quite dramatically for the last several weeks, where most recently we, we, we've stayed below, you know, uh, 3 million people uh, in forbearance. So that's a good thing as people come off of that. We've talked about how you know, those people have done a number of things coming off, worked things out with their bank or, you know, something else. And, uh, and we want to see more and more people come uh, come out of that. But if I had to say, you know, if I had to sum up the overall economy, you know, I, I pulled a couple of quotes here. Uh, Glassdoor says there's still a long road ahead, but the recovery continues to exceed expectations month after month. Now, when they say continues to exceed expectations, 
that's going to be of those that are forecasting, hey, here's what we think on unemployment. Here's what we think about growth. You know, GDP came out for the, uh, the third quarter, 33% growth, certainly not getting us back to where we were prior to this, but, but many of the numbers exceeding the analyst uh, forecast of what they thought they would see. Um, uh, indeed says the, the recovery maintained momentum, but there's still a deep hole to climb out of. So economically speaking across the country, still a deep hole to climb out of, but good information coming out relative to those coming off uh, forbearance, people getting jobs back and unemployment, you know, still decreasing, uh, you, you know, interest rates still uh, at historical levels. But I think we can look into the future and say, look, homes, you know, are projected to appreciate interest rates are projected to rise and uh, taking advantage of this time is, is the job that we have. Do you have any type of information, graphs or charts that show uh, a possible root of how real estate for, for real estate agents in general, sure. how that housing economy is going to continue to bounce back or where it's going to be in the next year or so, just from an economic standpoint from economists and yeah. what people are saying. We're working on uh, keeping current matters right now for December, uh, a lot of the forecast data. I can tell you right now, um, most economists are projecting here in 2020 that we will sell more homes this year than we did last year, which is unbelievable to think of. Uh, first yeah. of all, you know, in the, in, in the midst of a pandemic, we said, you know, after this, after this settles down, there's going to be more business for those that are out in the market and uh, diligent about it than they've ever seen. And that's certainly proved itself to be true. So this year, selling more houses in 2019, that's one thing. Lawrence Yoon came out and said he, he forecast 8 to 12% growth going into 2021 in units, which is crazy to think about. I, I think what, we, what we're going to see is we get more good information coming out about the pandemic. There are a lot of people that have been on the sidelines. We've had a great year, but a lot of people decided not to list their home, not to do something out of fear of contracting the virus. And as we get more good information, I think you're going to see more, uh, more transactions, more activity happen. Now, the other two things that we do have uh, a window in forecast wise are, you know, prices are forecasted to appreciate going into next year and mortgage rates are, are forecasted to, uh, to rise. So um, I think it's going to, 2021 is going to shape up to be a, a market that will be determined by, you know, how quickly we get, uh, you know, the, 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 the pandemic behind us. And there's still a lot of information to come out about this. You know, it's like each day we get something new or some new bit of information um, about what that may look like going into next year. It's going to be depending yeah. upon, though, you know, how, how comfortable people feel. Yeah, I mean, well, last year, 2019, we had somewhere around low five, five million, like 5.2, 5.3 million homes sold, I think, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. I don't so, know the exact number, but yeah. And this year, you're seeing that number is going to be higher. Is there's, that what you were there's a shot. There's, there's a shot at it. Now, you know, I don't know if you remember, we talked about the election and a lot of people kind of putting their hands in their pocket and uh, waiting yeah. to see what happens. I, I certainly think that has happened. Um, and the data shows us that, that, that the market in the last couple of weeks has, has cooled just a little bit relative to people. Um, you know, maybe maybe waiting to see how this is all going to shape out to buy a home. I don't think we lose those transactions, but but most analysts are saying, hey, we got a shot at selling more homes this year than we did last year, which that in itself is, Dude, is unreal. That's insane. That is insanity. And so I, I think from from all the stats that we're seeing and from where the economy is for the housing sector, at least, yeah. we're seeing another... For the most part of next year, another amazing year for real estate agents if if they're just doing what they're supposed to be doing, because we're we're leading the economy in a lot of things, dude. I, I think absolutely. I think housing is is leading the economy. Builders, you know, builder confidence is at an all time high. Um, again, I go back to we've had a great year, and we, you know, whether it be parents or other people we know, we know there are people. I, I'll speak for for myself. My parents are thinking about making a move and they've held off on it because, you know, they, they don't want to 
bring people into their home or do something else like that. So I think as we get more information, I think we'll see more uh, more activity happen uh, from those that have held off this year due to you know concerns uh, in the market. But I think it you know the the as we start to look at uh, in our team is 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 looking at a lot of this. I came out of a research meeting uh, yesterday where a lot of the indicators right now, Tristan, just you know, the market is is kind of is like this, you know, in, in each one of the, the different um, metrics that we follow. And the question is, how long can we sustain uh, that momentum? How long can we sustain this type of market? And it even it, it draws people into like we were talking about, I, I you know, screenshot it on my phone, people going, hey, here we go again, we're about to head into a crash. Um, and I think that's, you know, I, I've gotten a lot of calls or people on YouTube, there are brokers calling saying, I've got a lot of agents saying, when are all the REO properties going to hit the market? You know, so that's, that's definitely out in our business right now. I don't know if you hear it from people or, you know. Dude, I just, you know, I, I hear all this, all this talk, but a lot of it's just emotional, right? Sure. Because when we look at the stats, we still see inventory declining as a whole mm -hmm. and to have an average for the for this for the whole United States, an average of about 2.7 uh, months of inventory, that's that's really low. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it, in some areas, in some of our areas, it's only a month, right? And so, you wonder. It's like people people are really. This is what we were talking about. People are really getting emotional right now with everything that's happening, not only the pandemic, with the elections, right? And they're throwing logic out the door and saying, hey, who cares about logic? Right. And that's why I love talking to you because you bring back, you come back with facts and you're like, hey, guys, this is where we're at. This is where we're possibly heading based on facts. So just in case your clients ask, you know, and that's why I love KCM, man. Well, you know, I appreciate that. And, you know, it, the seven people that write and research and do this every day do a phenomenal job of gathering these facts. But let's talk about that for a minute, because I want to give uh, everybody a few things to use to have that conversation factually. If, if you want to have it emotionally, I can't help you today. I don't know what to do. But if you want to have it factually, <laughs> then, then, then I want to give you a few things. And I think the first thing we have to start off with, and I'm going to show this to you in a second, is what is a crisis? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to define that for you. But let me, let, let me show you a couple of things to have that conversation factually right now. And not, nobody has a crystal ball, but we can look at what's going on and, and, and hope to say, okay, this is, this is what's uh What's, a, what's about to happen. So Aspen Grove Solutions, unlike 2008, strategic defaults have not emerged as a serious problem and seem unlikely to emerge. Given stronger expectations for property price uh, increases, a record low inventory of homes, like you just said, and stable residential underwriting standards leading up to the crisis which has reduced the number of owners who are underwater. Okay, so, you know, Tristan, all throughout this time, we've been talking about equity, and I've showed that slide with the, the pie chart. Many of you have seen it. Um, that, that shows the tremendous amount of equity that people have uh, in the market today, and it gives them options in today's market. But we, if we go back to that question, what is a crisis of foreclosures in our business. And this is a look at it. I, I've shown this slide before, but I went and uh, our team made a few tweaks to it to, to really isolate in the middle the, the foreclosure crisis of 2008, where we were seeing you know, over half a million uh, foreclosures per quarter in this country, mm -hmm. quarter after quarter. If we go back all the way back to 1999 and we look at the average, including the crisis, the average is about 200,000 foreclosures per quarter in this country. Now, right now, we're still under a foreclosure moratorium across the country, but in the second quarter of this year, there were just under 24,000 foreclosures uh, that, uh, that came uh, to, uh, I'm going to say came to market, but that began, Okay. Now, what's, what, what does all this mean? You know, I think what we're going to see is we're going to see foreclosures come to market, but nowhere near the rate that we saw in the foreclosure crisis. Matter of fact, I think you can bank on headlines saying, hey, foreclosures are, uh, have gone up 50%, 100%, 200%. You know, the 
the the shock of it is going to be big because we are so low right now. But but even if foreclosures went up eight or nine times, whatever that would be, going into two hundred, you know, just over two hundred thousand, um, we would be at a normal rate. I'm not certainly not forecasting that today. I'm saying where we stand right now, the number of people that have been in forbearance, and we, we know those that have come out of it, uh, they haven't all, nowhere near all of them have turned into candidates for foreclosure. Um, they, they just the, the data just doesn't support it. Um, if we go back and we look at what Aspen Grove Solutions said, and we check that with what experts are saying, experts are projecting price appreciation going into next year. And all these experts know about the presidential election, they know about forbearance, they know about unemployment, they know about the, the, the COVID pandemic, and they're saying, no, we're, we're going to appreciate in price. You know, the lack of inventory you mentioned, 2.7 months, likely lower in a lot of places, um, is driving, keeping that upward pressure on prices, everybody coming into the market, uh, driven by the opportunity to, to take advantage of low rates. Uh -huh. But but th this next slide is very, very telling relative to um, what, what Aspen Grove Solutions said as well, and that's lending standards. Uh, this was released by the Urban Institute, and it's a picture of product risk and borrower risk going all the way back to 1999. And, you know, going into the housing crash, we had a lot of, a lot of product risk and a lot of borrower risk with, with uh, you know, the ways that mortgages were being given out. And, you know, in a, in a reasonable lending standard period, there's, there's, there's borrower risk and there's product risk uh, as we look at lending standards. And where do we look at today? Product risk has all but been eliminated in the mortgage world, and borrower risk has been significantly curtailed uh, from you know the housing crash time period. And so, you know, we look at a lot of different indexes relative to the uh, availability of mortgage credit, and they're nowhere near where they were uh, prior to the housing crash. And that by itself is not just a reason to say that it's not going to happen, but when you combine all of these factors. Um, you, you start to see uh, a trend here. And, and I'll say I've watched I, a lot of people have sent me the YouTube videos or people talking about housing crash. And I will say this, that there's two things I always say about them. Usually they're selling something to help you get out of it. So just be aware of that. The, the second thing is a lot of times they're describing an apocalyptic scenario that you go, yeah, if all that happened, then we probably would have a housing crash. They're like, well, if this were to happen and that were to happen and this were to happen and the whole system were to fail, then yes, we're going to, okay. I mean, that, that, that's, that's not a likely scenario, but um, I understand your perspective. But when we look at the facts and the data, and that's why I love doing this, Tristan, and your perspective on it unemotionally, we can answer that question and we can show people here's what's happening in the market. Yeah, I think that's the key, man. So last question here, and then we'll wrap it up. While everybody's paying attention to the possible things that can go wrong with the housing market saying, well, what about foreclosures? Mm -hmm. What about, what about the, the possible president coming in and their cabinet changing up everything and destroying the economy? Forget all that. Mm -hmm. What aren't we paying attention to that could be a possible problem? Because I don't see, I don't really foresee either of those two things being a challenge because it just, it, the data isn't there to, to say that it is going to be. What aren't we paying attention to that could be a problem? You know, I think the biggest thing that is out there that could hold our businesses back, that, that's, the, uh, that's how I would answer that question, is the lack of available inventory. So, so I think looking at that saying, let's take the, the, the foreclosure issue right now. We've got a lot of people going, is there a foreclosure crisis coming? And that's kind of dominating a lot of conversation. There, there's yeah. no conversation by and large saying, how do we help the people that may be in trouble? How do we serve them? There are people that will come out that, that will not get jobs back, that will go into foreclosure. We don't want to see that happen, but that's a reality of the housing market. How do we help them? How do we help the people that you know, need to make a move, need to downsize, need to upsize, have different needs uh, and get out there with this message. 
um, and 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 really, you know, help br our job right now is to bring that inventory back. Most you, you talk about economists and and experts that we follow. Most experts and economists say inventory is the one thing that could you know, cause the housing market to stall out uh, the, or the lack of inventory. Uh, and, and I think that's the biggest issue. Got it. All right, dude, that's, that's a good answer. I love that. And yeah, I agree with you on that. And that's why it's important to bring in more builders into this whole yeah. scenario as well, right? Absolutely. I love that, dude. Yeah. All right. So everybody jump into KCM, keepingcurrentmatters.com. Obviously, if you're not part of it, do it. Some amazing information you can use. I send that out to my team almost daily by text and say, hey, guys, post this. Uh, here's the picture. Post it on your Instagram. And here's the verbiage and the hashtags because you guys give all of that. So yeah, absolutely. that's how easy it is for my team. Yeah. yeah. So thanks for doing that, man. You guys do a, a very, very, very awesome job. Uh, I wouldn't imagine being in this real estate world without having something like that because you simplify all that data for us. Well, we're we're grateful for uh, for you and for just the 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 entire Lab Coat community. Um, you, you know, because it's really the 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 difference maker is great agents that put this great information out in the market because there are a lot of people told being told right now that hey this might happen that might happen this is what's going to happen with the presidential election this is what's going on um and uh, you, you know people may make it may not make a decision because they're misinformed and i think our job is to keep uh, keep people informed That's the key, dude. Thank you for your time, David. I'll see you, you got it. I think, next week or the week we after. We are. We are because well, I think we're taking off the Friday. We, we haven't been on for a while. Now we're two Fridays back to back. We ought to do this every Friday. But, um, yeah, I think we're on next Friday. I, Let's, uh, I look forward to it. And throw, throw right, questions in here. Let's let's find out what, uh, what people want to talk about, and I'll bring uh, whatever information people want to talk about. For sure, man. I'll, I'll throw some questions on Facebook and see what, what, uh, what comes out. Yeah, love it. Sounds good. Thanks, buddy. All right, take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.